Tay, how we doing, man? What's good? I'm doing good. Awesome. What have you been up to? Oh, uh, just grinding, chilling. Yeah, you're you're out of high school now, right? Yeah, I graduated last year, so I would be a freshman in college, but we didn't do that, so. Right. What what are you, what are your plans right now? Um, living life, doing YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, doing pretty much every social media you could think of. Right. Yeah. You you do you dive in or dove in or dove or whatever into about every single media platform, and I pretty you hit different niches on each one too. What yeah. do what do you so I know TikTok and I know uh YouTube, but what do you do on Facebook? So Facebook, actually funny thing is everything that I do on TikTok, I do the exact same thing on Facebook. So I legit make one video and then I repost it on Facebook. So it's all the same thing. And you it's just it's... Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much the same amount of time for posting two videos on two different platforms and they're yeah, both getting views. Right. And uh explain 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 how that works, like how you make that work um, full time. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah. So it's I mean, it's stressful. I mean, it's 100 percent stressful. But, you know, um, there was so I mean, I guess you're, so each platform, Facebook, TikTok and actually Snapchat was at the very beginning. Each of them have gone through a phase of like paying really well, like paying a lot of money. So it's like when I pretty much took advantage of those, like when they were paying good money. And so we started on, of course, TikTok. But when I started on TikTok, I was only like 15, 16. So I made no money off that. And then the moment I switched over to Snapchat, I was posting the same thing, the same TikToks, right? So I'm still only making one video. And uh, Snapchat was actually paying. So that was that was the good thing. And Snapchat was way in over their head. So they were paying a lot of money. They were doing like this million, million dollars a day type thing. And I got some crazy videos to pop off and they paid me crazy sums of money. And then, of course, just like every other, you know, too good to be true type scheme or whatever, they quit doing that. So then after that, I switched to Facebook. So now it's, you know, I'm doing TikTok and Facebook and Facebook has um, they have like three different, no, two different ways of paying. Um, they have a bonus program that they use while well, they used to have. Again, once again, too good to be true. All these all these social medias, they always like pay people a bunch of money. And then when people start taking advantage of it, they take it away. But um, so you can make money on there just by ads and stuff, just like YouTube, you know, your, your common ads. Um, and then, yeah, YouTube as well. YouTube's like my, what I would love to do. Cause I do like Madden content on YouTube. You know, I play video games on YouTube. I would love to do that, you know, as like my, my big thing, everything else, like TikTok, Facebook, that's just like support stuff, yeah. um, to pretty much pay rent. And then we right. try to grow the YouTube a little bit, but yeah. Right. Um, yeah. What What did you all start first when you were like 15, you know, years old? Like what was your first end to social media and why? Yeah, actually, this is a funny story. So when I was in eighth grade, I used to have really bad acne. And so I started Accutane, which is like, you know, like this really hard drug for acne anyways. Um, and for some reason, no idea what caused it, but I decided to uh, video myself in the mirror of like all my acne and it was like bad, like and I was pretty much just day one of my Accutane journey. And I posted that. And I, you know, I was kind of embarrassed, of course, because I'm showing my acne to the world. Anyways, I get in the shower. And like 10 minutes later, I get out of the shower and look at my phone. And it's already like 10,000 views. And I'm like, holy frick. I've never, yeah. ever had a video even get 10,000 views. And I guess from that point, I was I was hooked on the, just the, you know, idea of growing a social media. I am, yeah. 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 Love seeing the progress. It's addicting. I mean, it's a drug, really. Yeah. So that that was random. That was before getting into like your your uh, Madden YouTube and stuff yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then on YouTube, man, I've switched games so many times on YouTube. It's yeah, it's yeah. crazy, oh, but it's right, right. yeah, it's all video games though. There. Right. It's yeah. Crazy. So you the one you got 10k views on that was TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, the one that got 10k views that ended up blowing up to over like two million views. So. Crazy. that one that was yeah it was i mean i was very fortunate of course to to get that much but then yeah i don't know it was yeah it was addicting it was cool. that's crazy first first post two minutes yeah, these yeah, yeah. You know yeah oh yeah oh yeah and it's all right so timeline timeline you did that what was next like setting up what you do now like what was the timeline? yeah so so we started um i did all the all the hackney stuff and that went on for a while and i was trying like I would try just a bunch of trends 
and none of that stuff works. You know, like I don't, I don't know, I can't think of a trend, but there's a lot of trends people do that are like you know little eight second videos of like to music and stuff. Anyways, I wasn't big in the dances and stuff. It wasn't actually. There's this guy named Nick Wilkins, and he used to do videos like um because I do my stuff like pointing up. You know what I mean? Like I point up at a title, and then like a video plays or celebrities or whatever. Anyways, he um he was doing those kind of videos where he would have like a five minute intro of his face and then he'd show a video and he had this big series called um, like videos that give, you know, show faith in humanity or whatever like that. Anyways, that's what inspired me to do what I did now. And uh, that stuff took off a lot and you kind of learn, you know, which, what does good. But um, when I started doing that, I probably had like 10,000 followers and then slowly, but surely I just kept doing that for the next two, three years. And grew a TikTok account to like 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. And that was eventually banned. But yeah, we got yeah. to 1.5 million. Yeah. So yeah. That, that one got banned and your your account's at like two, two, mid 200K now. Is that? Yeah. Did you have another account get banned or is this just your second? This is this is the second one. Yeah. I've actually kind of sidetracked. I've been banned on every single social media now, which is yeah. wild. I just got banned on Snapchat actually like a week ago. So oh, it's, yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't like people that kind of. You know, and not cheat the system, but do stuff that takes money from them. You know, right? Exactly. Yeah. So. Nick Nick Wilkins was another creator. I you know when I was doing my shirts thing, I actually sent him a shirt too. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's kind of crazy, but that's very cool. Uh, yeah, I I had you followed for years, and randomly I looked. You know, your your TikTok videos are definitely a different niche from what you post on YouTube. And I noticed you did the exact same pattern every video. And I'm like, it blew my mind. I'm like, how did I not notice this? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's, it's habit at this point. I noticed that actually yesterday for like the first time. I was like, I do the same head turns in every video. You don't do it on purpose? No, no. Well, it's, I, it's all, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. It's weird. It's just a habit. I thought it was like, so if you have viewers come back that they'd like comment, like he does the same thing. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. So uh you did that niche just because you saw growth in there and you were kind of hooked on that growth um, yeah what was, what was your first like series in that specific niche that did well uh movies uh movies we all forgot existed or something like that was yeah there was i did like 60 parts of that and yeah they were all like 10 second videos to the song riptide and it yeah. was like i don't know i'd show like three or four movie covers and you'd get the people that are like oh my goodness i forgot those existed and then of course you got the hate comments that are like no one forgot those existed right which both are fine because yeah any engagement's good but yeah i just yeah. Yeah, encourage the hate comments honestly yeah we yeah. need those for i so. yeah which is funny because i actually we'll get into this i guess probably later but i also went to a different niche which was like minute-long video storytelling on tiktok as well for a while yeah but if you, as long as you like say stuff that like some people could disagree with, you know, but it's not like just straight up lying mm -hmm. and the, the engagement goes through the roof. Cause everyone thinks they're right. Like their opinions, right. Yeah. And they love voicing that in the comments. It's great. Yeah. Um, crazy, crazy dude. Um, uh, yeah. Wild, wild, wild. Uh, so one thing that I respect with your content, uh, you probably didn't think about, but just has helped you in the long run is I feel like creators now are so worried about creating content in bulk because yeah. they're, cause they're the way that the create content isn't sustainable to post time and time and time and time and time again. Uh, did you, did you plan to like have your content be niched around something you could literally just sit down and make, you know, tens, hundreds of them if you wanted to? I mean, not, not really. If I'm being 100% honest, this is probably not good, but I typically started because it was easy. Like, yeah. it was genuinely easy. And, of course, back when I started, I had school, I had basketball, and, of course, you know, you got to spend time with family, too. So I needed something that I could literally sit down for an hour, make, you know, four or five videos in an hour, and then you're good for, you know, the day or two. Right. So that's kind of why I started it. Um, and, of course, as this has become my full-time job, we put way more work into it. But, yeah, mm -hmm. to start it off, it was, it was really nice to be able to mass-produce stuff. It's smart, like, you know, what I was making as a 16-year-old, because I also had my TikTok phase, was, like, videos I'm sitting down talking, wandering around my house, you know, making different sounds and editing, and it took time, and it was only one video, you yeah. know. Uh, there's something good about posting six or seven videos that you can crank out really fast rather than just putting your all into one. I think it's Im both are important a little bit, but uh, what I was doing back then was not sustainable. 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, I have people ask me, so like for my YouTube content, they're like, how do I get into the Madden niche or whatever? How do I get into a certain niche to where like I'm one of the creators in the certain niche, you know what I mean? And I always tell people quantity over quality to begin, you know, like yeah. all you got to do is get people to click on the video. And if you have a good attitude and you, your, your content's good to watch, at least then you can worry about the quality later, you know, quality is going to come with better equipment, all that stuff. So if you got to sit down and spend less time actually like editing and stuff, do that so that you can grow the channel a little bit. And then mm -hmm. once, you know, you have more time, then make the quality a lot better. But yeah, I mean, I, I think people overvalue. I mean, I have all the equipment to make my videos as good as I want to make them, mm -hmm. but uh, there's nothing like just setting up your OBS or whatever you use and just clicking record and putting your personality on and making sure you have somewhat good audio quality and just putting out stuff because that's that's how you go. You would not be able to do daily if you were doing all that stuff. I know, oh, I know you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, so, I, I, I think a, a good thing to remember too is like for my YouTube videos and stuff, I never do a double take or anything. You know what I mean? It's always like what you're seeing is like the first take of it. And I think that's not, of course, for like my TikTok content. If I mess something up in there, it's easy to fix. But like just be like authentic because when you're authentic, it's not going to take as much energy and you can actually, you know, put the energy that you would putting on a fake facade for, you know, more videos and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I've noticed when when I just press record on a, a you know an easier recording platform like OBS or what are, Streamlabs or whatever you use, I think it makes your thoughts a little more genuine too. Yeah. You're just able to talk and not worry about it. Yeah, I think that's it's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, how long have you been daily on YouTube? Daily? Oh gosh, man, we've been daily for probably four or five years. It's been, it's yeah. been, yeah. It's fun, but it's not always, you know, wasn't at least always sunshine and rainbows because, I don't know, just especially when you're not getting paid from it, it's hard to keep posting because you're like, why am I doing this? You know what I mean? But it's got easier now just because, like I said, full-time job and stuff. But yeah, we've been daily now for four or five years and it's been it's been quite the journey, but it's paid yeah. off. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say, it. I mean, I'm getting better at it now, but why? Why have you been daily for five years? I, I... I don't know. I, I wanted it to work. I mean, I look at people, I don't know if you know who, like, if I look at big Madden creators, like MMG and stuff like that, like I genuinely, like they enjoy making content, you know, they got millions of followers and stuff like that. And they didn't get to millions of followers by posting, you know, once a week or whatever, at least to start, you got it. You got to post a lot. And also it makes it easy when I like genuinely enjoy what I'm doing. Like I genuinely enjoy, like on, on Madden, I open packs, I play games. Like I genuinely enjoy playing Madden, which makes it super easy for me to, you know, upload daily, even if it is you know, 10 minute videos and stuff like that. Like it's, it's long videos, but it's still, I, I, I have so much fun playing the actual game. So, um, it's, yeah. I mean, I don't know, more yeah. videos, yeah. Better chance you have it blowing up. So you'd put what, when did that start fitting into your kind of workflow? Uh, you did your, your acne getting into those easier storytelling and, and compilation videos. When did, when Madden fit into the, not Madden, but more of your YouTube gaming, uh, style yeah i started on well i started on 2k so i started playing 2k first and like i said the game switched but it's not really about the game but i don't know i i kind of i don't know i always always like watching streamers and stuff like that and i mean genuinely i just wanted to be a, a streamer or like a a video maker for you know sports games or whatever whatever game and i honestly my friend gave me an elgato at church one day and that was super nice of him. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's start streaming. So, of course, I did what everyone did and started streaming Fortnite and stuff like that. But then finally, you know, found the game that kind of started working. But, man, I don't know. We just was going to play the game anyways. Might as well record it and post it. So, yeah. What? So, I'm out of school now, too. I'm not doing anything, a job or anything. Well, what's been your experience on the the difference between having stuff going on and making content versus it being your only focus. Yeah. I don't, I mean, not having anything going on kind of like, this is, this is my job that pays the rent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you don't really have a choice in a sense, but to make videos. So this is kind of like my school in a sense, you know, all the time I would have spent on school, I spend not here now, but at least with school, I'm living with my parents. So you don't have to like pay rent and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. It is. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't really have a choice at all but to post videos. So, yeah, you know, no distractions other than that. 
And I, I've been thinking on this the last few days. It's like, and that's where you really, well, it, it can make, it can be two things. Um, not having a choice can make you really hate it. Mm -hmm. Um, but also it can make you rely on it so much to the point where you're going to drive success. When it's literally the, when it's literally the only thing you can lean on, Mm -hmm. uh, because when you're when you're diving into this this deep spot, it's like that's the only thing you're thinking about on a day to day. I mean, me and you got different things we're thinking about, but it's still that same thing that we're relying on. It's like we have to make this work because we got nothing else in our brains. Obviously, there's different options if we looked, but our brains cannot see that. Like yeah. we're so diving in on this. Yes, yeah. I've been thinking on that a little bit. It's and it's sad to say, but like the hard reality is, it's all about the money in a sense, at least for like. You got to take care of, you know, the stuff that you got to pay for. So it's like, I have to make this TikTok video or else I'm not going to be able to pay rent. You know, it's kind of like if you got your back, you know, your, your back back up against the wall, you can push out 10 videos in a day and hope one blows up. But when, you know, when, when money is something you actually need at this age and stuff like that, it's like, you have to, you have to figure out a way to make it work. And if you don't, you're going to be, you know, you have to go get a real job, but mm -hmm. yeah. And so my Financially, my my success has been I post videos and then I'm able to have like people see me and then be like, oh, I want you to do this for my business. So yeah. I don't rely on socials at all. Uh, what it, what's been your way to, you know, live off the financials of social media? It's been mostly those paid programs or. Yeah. So like I said, Snapchat was great. They, mm. they had a couple of times where they paid me big sums of money. Yeah. And of course the first paycheck I blew on a bunch of shoes over here, but yeah. So, you know, I blew that, but after that, um, a couple more times from Snapchat, they paid me a decent amount of money. It wasn't like anything crazy, you know, not hundreds of thousand dollars, something like that. No. Um, but then TikTok also paid me, like I said, once I got into that, uh, they do this program now. I don't know if you know, it's called like creativity beta program. It's pretty much any video that's an over a minute long. You get paid like a dollar per thousand views. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they pay me a little bit. And then also YouTube, of course, you know, they, they pay per thousand views. Once again, um, they're like five ish dollars per thousand views, at least for the niche I'm in with gaming. So um, then also I live stream every night for, you know, four or five hours on YouTube as well. So yeah, I, I also rely on donations from people as well. They help out quite a bit. So yeah, that's, that's definitely nice. Yeah. When did you start the live stream grind? Uh, yeah, probably four or five years ago. I didn't, I, I did it. I did it probably two or three times a week, um, okay. you know, back then on 2k. And then I started streaming every, every single day, probably four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. So I've. I literally, I've missed maybe three or four days in the last four or five months of live streaming. It's just so addicting. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talking about the importance of that. What have you noticed since live streaming, like, you know, with, with numbers and engagement and all that? Yeah. It gives people a chance to like see you for who you are. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think people enjoy, like I got a lot of energy on live streams. You know, I'm, I'm having a good time. Actually funny. I have a, I have a LaCroix pure right here. Oh, let's go. Um, yeah. Um, but no, like I, I think people, when they get a chance to talk to you and stuff that grows that connection, which makes them want to watch your videos, uh, want to come back to your live streams. Even if, I mean, when I started live streaming, I mean, we had literally had two or three people in there, but that's two or three people that you can, you know, grow a little relationship with. Yeah. And they're, they're going to watch your videos. The moment you post them, they're going to like them. They're going to comment, which is going to, you know, increase engagement on that. But the moment you got, you know, three, 400 people on a live stream, that's going to be three or 400 people more views on your videos that are going to, you know, so you're constantly just kind of growing and snowballing it. And if they like you, they're going to keep coming back until, you know, every day you gain one more person. It's, it's really helpful. And I don't know, I have this like superstition that if you go live, it shows that your account's active and like they promote you a little more. I don't know if that's true, but yeah. maybe it is. So no, I, I, there's something to be said about that. It makes it more fun from a creator perspective too. It mm -hmm. makes it a little more personable, like what you're creating and who's actually seeing it type thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, hey, Pablo, what's good? Hey, yeah. George, you know? No, I, I like that a lot. Um, so are you doing very similar stuff to what you're posting? Like just like pack openings or are you just kind of sitting and talking? Yeah, I, I do. I do pack openings. I, well, my entire stream is me playing Madden, but I do a lot of pack openings, which is pretty much gambling in Madden. So, right. I'm like a little gambling addict, so that's kind of that's kind of fun to do on live. It gives you I don't know I like I like the fact of like if you pull something crazy you can go insane, and then everyone else like 
the other hundred people in the stream or whatever are going crazy with you. So it's like a big community that we're all just kind of like gambling together in a sense and, and Madden, which is fun. Yeah. Uh, how do how do YouTube live streams work? It does it 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 puts it in a category on your account. Can you rewatch them from the past? Or yeah, you okay? Gotcha. It uploads it as a VOD after, so it's yeah. you don't even have to do anything. It automatically uploads it. So yeah, I think on YouTube there's you have your YouTube video and then it says live and then it says shorts because you know they do their TikTok version as well. So right. Uh, are you making? I guess I didn't look at your shorts platform. Are you making yeah. shorts for your pack openings or uh, not for pack openings? You're no, just I uploading. What the TikToks, yeah, the the TikToks are, yeah, that's pretty much. I have those everywhere, just because those, those, you know, get a lot of views and stuff. Yeah. I don't know how to do necessarily the like. I see a lot of people do the gaming content where like at the top of the screen they have their face cam and the bottoms like the game or whatever. I don't know how to do that yet. I suck at editing, but oh, yeah, I get it. Once yeah. I figure out how to do that, I'll probably start uploading the shorts and stuff just to. Yeah, what do you use it at what, for editing? Like, I use for your basic stuff. DaVinci Resolve. Okay, I, is the thing, and then I literally. Man, I'm so bad at editing. I literally put, you know, I know how to put background music. I know how to, like, speed stuff up. I know how to do, like, some of the basic stuff. But there's people that, like, literally have, like, you know, like, the TikTok videos that have all the captions and, like, the, and it, like, just makes it fun to read the caption or whatever. So, like, I wish I could do that, but I don't know how to do that yet. So, yeah, I definitely got to sit down one day and actually learn how to edit. But I think that says something, though, too. Like, you're doing social media, you barely know how to edit. Like, it's possible. yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, all it is is, like, I tell this to people all the time, even my brother and stuff, turn the camera on and start talking, and, like, if you have a good personality and stuff, people are gonna watch. You just gotta keep doing it, so it doesn't have to be the most fancy thing, you know? Yeah. How How is your, like, how was getting over the embarrassment of it at the beginning and maybe, the, like, just getting over the, the mentally draining of posting daily? How was that? Um. Yeah, I mean, it, at first, you kind of gotta have, like, a an attitude of like, I don't care what other people think, but like during middle school and high school and stuff, of course, in the back of your mind, it's like, I make TikToks every day and people at school see them and they probably think it's stupid, you know? But then there's also like the pride aspect of like, all right, well, I'm making money off of it. And you know, you're not like, I'm, I'm making money off TikTok, which is kind of crazy. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I, I think that gives you like a, a little boost in confidence. I mean, you gotta, confidence is everything in life. You know, you gotta, you gotta believe that you can actually do it. And that kind of, if you have enough confidence, it's going to, you know, stunt some of the embarrassment that might arise. Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. And I I would be anxiety written relying on those paid programs that the social media people. How is that? Like, oh, trust me, it's it's terrible. I we were I was golfing with my dad yesterday, and my brother, and I was literally talking to him. I was like, I, I've actually talked about this in my stream, too. Sometimes I I don't know about fantasize, but I have thought like how nice it would be to have a, a nine to five job that's like guaranteed. You know what I mean? Like I used to never think that I wanted a nine to five job, but now having this, it's like money's not necessarily an issue now, but I go through spans in a week where maybe I think a hundred dollars, you know what I mean? I'm like, Oh frick. Like if this is continues, I'm going to have to get, you know, something that's guaranteed because nothing's guaranteed in this industry. Sadly. I mean, YouTube could, you know, there could be a lawsuit and they have to get taken down tomorrow. So it's who knows, who knows really. And, it's time times change so fast like you were just talking about i saw a little bit of it like the tiktok program if you post longer videos like that's a very new thing like you had to be proactive and hop on that and learn about yeah. that in order yeah. to reap that benefit which that I, I actually found out about that i'm in a tiktok group chat that we don't really talk much but anything like that you know we just let each other know like hey there's this new program i'd get on it if i were you same thing with snapchat I was actually late to the Snapchat kind of bandwagon or whatever, but yeah. I was there in time to at least get a little bit of the, you know, the good stuff from them. But I just surround yourself with people that, you know, are going to like, you know, we let each other know when certain stuff's happening, which is nice. Yeah. And just, I mean, you know what you made or whatever, you don't have to say, but the scale of it was uh, one of the, one of my like videographer friends, I'm in a lot of like videography group chats or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, record cool shots or whatever. Mm -hmm. She, she got on that early Snapchat wave of just posting those shorter videos and one, it was like, it maybe got over a million views or something really small. And she got 60,000 from it. I mean, 60, that just that's crazy. Wi that's just wild of like those programs. They go hard at the beginning, but they cut off right away. Cause it's not yeah. sustainable. It's See, that's what I'm saying. I wish I would've gotten on there early. Cause I'll tell you the, the first payment I got she was on it early, early. Yeah, yeah. I was on it. Maybe the last, like, like the tail end, like last three months of it. And uh, I actually remember this is a funny story. I'm playing in a golf tournament and I'm not playing too well, right? 
yeah. slow around. And I, I bend down by my bag. You're not supposed to be on your phone during a tournament, but I open my phone up, go to Snapchat, you know, snap my girlfriend, snap people, blah, blah, blah. And then I look on, look on, like I get a, a notification from him and it's for a video that got like 1.5 million. And, yeah. and it was like, and it said like $20,000. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like 16 years old. I'm like, what the frick? Yeah. And so of course at that point, I'm like, screw golf. I don't, I don't yeah. care. I don't need so, this. But, you know, she got, you know, over a million or whatever. She gets 60,000. I got 20,000. So it, was, it yeah. started declining fast. Right. And there was another time a couple, you know, later. It was like, I got one, three million. And it got me like 3,000. So, like, yeah. they it, they couldn't sustain it at all. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's, but, you know, it was fun while it lasted. And just kind of, yeah. maybe one day another thing like that arises. I'm just going to, you ready yeah. for it. One thing that's brought me peace, too, is, like, I, I see a lot of, like, more entrepreneur personas like definitely maybe a nine to five is maybe a little more secure than the way you're earning money. But also I think we over, over, over like look, or maybe we overvalue rather the security of a nine to five is like, they could also just pull the plug on you anytime too. That's now, for sure. I feel like with me and you though, like I know you grew up in a smaller area. Uh, I feel like those small town organizations though, they're, they they got you they got you in their heart but yeah it makes sense but like in a bigger corporate setting like you know they they pull 10 percent of their workforce just like this and people people get screwed yeah. over so it's just like yeah it's 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 cool but it, it's possible to do it without that too it's yes yeah. and and like i said i i do uh my own work as well and you feel that risk every day i mean it's it's anxiousness but yeah I was like, I've been meaning to ask you, like, how do you, how do you get your clients? Because that is that where the the bulk of your money's coming from is doing work for little companies and stuff with your video yeah, work or yeah, yeah yeah. How do you how do you get clients or whatever for that? Do you just email them or? Yeah, so uh, you try to like email and you want to make content. You want people to come up to you, but the 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 big relationships that have been the most beneficial for me and the other party has just been personal connections. Uh, right. meet, meeting someone, being cool with them, being there, being there for them, and eventually that uh, bond forms. Um, yeah. So, my my security comes from I got like four, four or five people that come to me every month for the same amount of work, and I fulfill that, and then it it works out and it's great. And then on top of that, I get one time gigs, and I got all my video equipment. So I usually go out to their um, area of town and record them. But I also have clients that I just make reels for over the internet and do that as well. So that's where my uh, security comes from, where I'm able to do that on my own. But um, where social media comes into play is I almost kind of use it to promote that I know how to do socials too. Like, hey, I post this. I have fun with it. I'm on every platform. I post Facebook, just like you. I post everything. Mm -hmm. Facebook, YouTube. Instagram, TikTok, all the rest of them, LinkedIn, Twitter, all those. Like, I know, I know how to do it. If you need help, you know, I know how to make stuff look good. But uh, so they don't exactly need money from socials, like what you're doing. But uh, they need stuff to look good on their socials, which I, which I can help with. I was gonna say because you know that night that I texted you about watching your video or whatever on YouTube. Yeah, I was, I was, I think I was watching the one where you maybe went to Wyoming or something like that. Yeah, but I was in awe, at just like the pure like. I mean, the quality of the videos you film and the editing and everything is so good. Yeah. And it's, and it kind of, I don't know if it necessarily made me feel guilty or what, but I was like, how, like, how do my, like, you know, videos get more views, but they're yeah. nowhere near as good a quality as your videos and stuff like that. It's, it's yeah. interesting. I mean, you know, you know the answer to it. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's daily and, you know, you, you do good info. Now, I, yeah. as you can see, I've only been posting once a week for the last, mm-hmm five weeks on YouTube. That's all I can do. I've been posting yeah. daily reels, but, uh, it's, it's, it, it's fun posting those videos. Um, but they're not, you know, they're not formatted to get high views. Yeah. Sadly. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever switch to that? Like try to maybe make your, you know, YouTube or something more like a, I don't know, more like a vlog YouTube. That's like uploading every couple of days or whatever. Uh, it would be it would have to be a team that's bigger than me for that to happen. Like gotcha. it it would need to be like my brand really revolves around me posting and I need help m- making that happen. I don't think I could do that on my own with where I'm at. But um 
I will never be able I'll never want to to go down to a niche kind of like what gotcha. what you're getting into. So your niche videos on your shorts is what bring in the traffic, but you want to do your Madden videos. That's kind of like me too. I just kind of want to do my my own Madden type stuff. Yeah, yeah that's uh, nice. for sure. Um, which is the hardest way to grow a social page is when you want to post only what you want and not what the socials want you to post, which yeah, I'm going to push through and do it. But uh, it's the hardest way to grow. But 100%. It's the way you get the most connections, too, like mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I think if you were to, like, kind of like we're talking about security, I think, like, if you push through in one of those niches and become really successful, that's way more secure than uploading shorts and TikToks of, like, yeah, just, like, you know, stuff that gets the quick hits and stuff like that. Yeah. If, if I can grow a Madden account, you know, and everyone comes back to me every year for new Madden content or whatever... Yeah. That's going to be way more secure than uploading shorts about celebrities that really have no meaning to them. It's more just gets me paid and that's about it. You know what I mean? Exactly. If you can do those more, you know, five, 10 minute long videos and have a fan base around that or, you know, even live stream. I mean, you've seen how well live streamers do. Like, oh, yeah. Those are the most more secure ones. Yeah. Um, and I, I see the social media landscape reversing back to where it started a little bit, too. Yeah. Do you see that? Uh, like, wait, what do you mean by that? Meaning, like, we went really, really hard on the shorts, shorts, shorts. Everyone makes. Oh, and then it's the now is reverting back. Yeah, which I mean, you can look. I mean, look at TikTok. They literally incentivize pro, you know, creators to go to minute long plus videos. And that's you know very I mean? recent. Same thing with Facebook. Same thing. All you know, even um, Instagram now does like their IGTV type, whatever it's called, which is you know that you can even upload like forty minute videos on there. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense, you know, with going to longer content stuff, which is good, I think, for the people that enjoy making that longer content. Yeah, it, it's it's the it's always been the most satisfying to make for me. Um, yeah, uh, and it's cool seeing the the best social media funnels that have worked like recently has been like the uh, Sam Solik type stuff or like mm. even. I'll say Andrew Tate, he's a little more controversial, but just like posting huge clips of yourself and then having other people clip them out and then make them and that promotes you. I think it's oh, yeah. so, it's been cool how that's been working. Yeah. I was gonna say if you get to the point where everyone's posting your content, not just you, I mean you're you're kind of chilling. You know, you're yeah. You got a lot of people out there that are gonna see your face and stuff. Have have you messed with um faceless content? Like other streams of content besides just you and your face and and your brand i did that for a while on this new tiktok account it was literally just like yeah there my face wasn't in it at all but i don't know i mean even if it did get the views it never got the follows and it never got the you know like it didn't get the interactions because it's not yeah. it's not authentic it's not you you know what i mean i think people just subconsciously like to see a face put a put a face to the content mm. And some people dig that, I guess. Like, it's the way they want to create. But I think it's the most, like, yeah, you can get really short-term views and maybe get some things going. But I just think, mm -hmm. it, I think it could be the harder way to go. It's just, like, a way I've never looked at social media before. Yeah, and you don't grow a connection with that person. I mean, it's like, I, there's a lot of people that stream Madden content without a face cam. Yeah. And, I mean, you can just, you can, I mean, I try watching. I just don't enjoy it as much because you don't see the reactions. You don't see yeah. certain stuff. You just hear them, which, I mean, of course, hearing's fine, but... Yeah. I don't know. I think people like to put a face to something. Yeah. I mean, when I think of Madden content, I think of like MMG. And I mean, yeah. if I were to create content, I would do it like him, you know? <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if MMG didn't have a face cam, he wouldn't be MMG most likely. No, no. Yeah. He needs a face cam. He does. He does. But uh, what I've seen transpiring recently has been TikTok shop. Have you seen anything about that? Yeah. 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 Um, my I've never tried it. No, 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 it's I would never try it either, even though I probably should because it's in its early stage. Like we're in that we're in that stage where it's going to work right now and then it'll die off like we're in it right now. Um, my my buddies do like reselling. And uh, so they, they love dipping into ways to make money. I mean, they just they just make money. They're very good at making money. I, I don't yeah. know how they do it. But uh, one guy posted one video and it was for a product that he'd get a 10 percent cut on. Uh, or whatever affiliate or whatever, mm -hmm. it got forty thousand views and the video made him two hundred bucks. Just one, he posted wow. one video, and I'm like, that is not how social media works. Like, it usually takes time to make money like that. Yeah, but, 
stuff like that's crazy to me. Yeah, I was thinking about that stuff too. Like you got to dedicate your like if I were to try to do that with a TikTok shop, I feel like I'd have to dedicate my entire TikTok to just like pretty much be a a promoter of certain products from TikTok shop, which is yeah, you know, which I I wouldn't feel like I want to do. I don't want to you know completely no. dedicate a certain social media to just pretty much be a sellout for a certain project or product. No. And th- the most realistic way you'd do it is you'd you'd make a temporary other account, do all the yeah. stuff, hit that so, wave. But yeah. I mean, that takes time out of your day. That's that's yeah. the is that worth your time? And that's always yeah. the answer. I don't think it's worth my time, but. Or ideally something that you're actually going to use like in your videos, you know what I mean? If it's something you use in your videos, like your workout, you know, you, you do a lot of gym videos and it's yeah. an energy drink or something, then it's worth it 100%. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, how has working with other brands been? Has there any, been anything huge there or has it been pretty just kind of you've been relying on yourself? I kind of kind of relying on myself. Um, yeah, back on my old TikTok with like, the you know, 1.5 million followers it was so easy to get brand deals and stuff did a deal with warheads they send me a couple stuff no money involved though with that like the the super big people aren't going to send you money you know if you're a smaller creator though i mean they will but if, for someone that was my size no but um i got a couple brand deals with like the coldest water which is a lot you know a lot of people got brand deals with those but on this new account and on uh, YouTube, I haven't really got any paid brand deals on YouTube. I have one, which is a coin selling company for Madden, but that's, you know, has to do with Madden. Yeah. They don't really pay me that much, but I haven't really, yeah, I haven't really had any luck with brand deals. Um, you know, which is, yeah, kind of sucks, but well, yeah, it's usually the way people, you know, yeah, but yeah. You've been tanking it. You're like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to make these programs work, bro. And I respect that. I respect yeah. That. I mean, it's like, I mean, really, if someone reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, do you support our content? I'm like, 100% for sure. But I, every person I've emailed, every company I've emailed, it's never really, it's always the um, the people that are like, yeah, well, we'll give you a 10% code and that's it. Like, you know, um, you know, like when people say they're sponsored by something, but they're not actually sponsored, they have to like still buy their product or whatever. And they just promote, tell other people to buy it. Yeah. It's like kind of stuff like that. Like I want a sponsorship where it's like actually... I right, we're we're paying you and then you get a code you get 10 percent commission or whatever but um like you're actually sponsored by us we know you by name and stuff not just mm-hmm. you know it's, I don't know. it's more of a partnership I'd say. yeah i want a partnership not a yeah right um how has have you gotten any like good viewers from tiktok to youtube or has that been a hard transition to make it it's been pretty it's been a pretty hard transition i've like i've tried and it only brings over maybe you know 50 or so subs but those subs aren't going to be people that are going to watch your youtube content and it's it's weird so like right now on, on uh tiktok or at youtube i have like you know twenty two thousand subs or something like that but i also post my shorts so I, I am curious like i honestly don't know i wish there was a t- statistic that showed me like what percent of my followers is from shorts and what percent is from madden you know what i mean because um of course the people that sub to my channel because it's shorts they're not going to watch my madden content most likely so i don't know it's kind of I, yeah, it's it's weird combining two contents in the same social media platform, but mm-hmm. yeah. it's two different things. Wild man, uh, what did you say? When did you diverge? I'm assuming you just were doing YouTube and TikTok for a while. When did you diverge into the other platforms? When was that important? That was when pretty much when people told me that it was popping. Um, yeah. Once again, that TikTok group chat, they told me Facebook was doing good and to do Facebook. And it's not like those were like, you know, quick hits or whatever, but I had created a Facebook page and just po- posted all my TikToks and that page grew to like 76,000 subs or whatever like that, or followers or whatever. Um, which, you know, so I, I mean, realistically, I haven't actually found a, a platform on my own yet. That's like pop in. It's more other people. So I kind of got to, I kind of want to try to, you know, try something crazy on some platform and see if it works for myself, you know? Yeah. Um, to see if that works because yeah if you're the first one there it could be crazy it's been interesting to see i'm i'm i've dove into a lot of different uh industries because people i work for are all in different things like i do work for that reselling group i was talking about and mm-hmm. they do really well on youtube and then i do work for a tree service locally and they do really well on facebook like it's just it's cool seeing uh, all the different niches um actually my ones that's performed the least has been like instagram and stuff so it's just been uh i've noticed uh the platforms aren't really becoming uh bulk content friendly they don't like the bulk content anymore yeah 
Yeah, yeah, you definitely see it going that way as well. It's kind of interesting. Like Instagram doesn't have any sort of program that pays people for shorts, so yeah, you can kind of tell they're not incentivizing shorts necessarily. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, it might be good for brand deals or whatever, but there is no, no getting paid on Instagram for shorts or anything. Um, you can you can do well, but I don't want to go out of my way to use the Instagram native editing stuff and making it totally yeah. their style and using their own audios. Um, yeah. And not worth it for me, man. That's why I revert back to TikTok all the time. It's, yeah. it's easy to use. It's simple. and Yeah. yeah is that bad? Um, are you like, would you, like, I mean, it kind of is your company now with you working with other companies and stuff, but would you want to grow that to, you know, 20, 30, 40 clients and like create a kind of marketing business out of it? Yeah. Is that the goal or? That's my main goal. So I'm, I'm headed, I'm well headed that way. Um, so that's my main goal. That's, that's where I find the most like purpose and fun. And that's just how my brain naturally thinks is yeah. I want to bring on more people. I want to, you know, increase the clientele. Um, I want to, I mean, the, the long, long term play is like, you know, digital products and stuff like that and, and mentorships and stuff. But the, the, the short term play here for the next few years is help brands out and build a brand. And, you know, I think, the you want in life if you can wake up and work on whatever you want to work on i mean that's just yeah that's just winning here and you know where we're at in america you know or yeah any if you can wake up and do what you want i mean that's a that's a big fun thing uh sunset yeah i was talking about the, the stress earlier of course of like you know am i going to have enough money for the next day with like this stuff but that is one of the massive pros to this is people are always like oh, I got to go to work tomorrow or something like they don't want to, you know? Yeah. Or Whereas it's like me, I'm my own boss, you know? So yeah, you kind of, you want to go to work. You love doing what you're doing. And yeah. I think that's what everyone needs to strive for a little bit is to yeah. do something you like doing. Yeah. It's a huge plus. I say I work harder, but I don't, I don't think I actually do. I think I, I, I work on what I want to work on and yeah. I can do it longer because I like it. But I don't have to, but I still do because I want to scale. But so it's yeah. weird. I mean, you you agree too. I mean, you oh one hundred percent. You work nights, you stream at nights, but you don't think of it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I love it. I love it for sure. Yeah. So this this last year has been my first full year doing it. Um, Good stuff. And we're working toward hey, like I work kind of under independently under my name, but um, I'm I'm looking to work toward more under a a marketing agency type persona so yeah we'll see how that goes um it's it's been fun working on the old personal brand and uploading pods and and youtube videos and shorts and and just dipping into all of them see how they go i think i think the real success for me is using it as a networking gen rather than uh 16 year old me wanting like the high view counts like i don't know you no, I, I, I approached you. That's how I met you. But, you know, I did that how to make your computer slash laptop look dope series back then. I mean, like I had that same grind as you back when I was 16. I loved seeing those numbers grow. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm saying, yeah. I mean, gaining like friends and stuff is definitely the most, you know, that, that could end up being your biggest like success out of everything, even if it's, you know, like, I don't know, like, what what happens one day if I need an editor because I never learned to edit, you know what I mean? Then yeah. maybe you become an editor. Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, network, the network's huge. The network's huge. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, who, who's kind of been your your inspos growing up while doing this? Like, obviously, you don't learn to do this on your own. You're looking at other people doing it. Yeah. I mean, of course, since I've gotten to Madden, it's been MMG. Yeah. But um, it wasn't always necessarily that I, i'd say nick wilkins was a, was a massive one i mean the guy's still going now on still talk right. and he's yeah. yeah he's he's completely transformed his content into really high quality content that's really good yeah um and he started at where i was so you know hopefully one day i can you know transform to that um so yeah i'd say probably nick wilkins and then mmg both of them are are huge how about you do you got any anyone uh i I hopped in about every single niche ever, so yeah. uh, just anyone going after it. Right now, it's more people scaling, like, businesses. Um, I've been love looking into, like, Cole Bennett's brand through Lyrical Lemonade. I've been loving his okay. stuff. Uh, just the fact that he has a team, and they do whatever they want, and it looks great. Uh, 
I've been, this one's kind of a weird one, but I've been loving looking into uh, Jesse's from Nelk's new brand. Oh, Nelk, yeah, Nelk. So Nelk was probably a little bit of an aggressive brand for me to follow. It wasn't my most fun thing to follow. But uh, uh, since then, Jesse, like, sold his share or whatever, and now he's going after this brand called Sunday. And they, again, just they do what they want, and they're passionate about it. And that inspires me. So it's been fun checking into his stuff. Um, I grew up watching vloggers like Casey Neistat and like Roman Atwood and, you know, they're, they're dope. And I was in a photography stage. I mean, I, I just, I love the, I love this niche, man. So I, yeah. I have about every inspo possible. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. A lot of people to look at. Right. So I think that's kind of the, I mean, what we're all chasing in this niche is to kind of do whatever we want, you know, when yeah. we want to do it and stuff and do it with the people that you have fun with. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, like a lot of people that do like houses, you know, like, you know, it's like Jesser and like Bucket Squad is for uh, 2K. Maybe I heard of them. They, yeah, they do like a bunch, they did a bunch of like, they started on 2K and they were just a bunch of, there was like, you know, six, seven guys that did a bunch of 2K content together and then they grow and now they do a bunch of basketball content and they, you know, vlog all together and stuff like that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's kind of everyone's everyone's got to start somewhere somewhere, but eventually, I think we all kind of hope to be, if if you're in this, you know, kind of niche, of yeah, social media and stuff like that. Yeah, are there newer groups like that nowadays? I feel like the ones I see really, really started years ago, and now they're like, they're like reality TV type quality now. You know? Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily like those ones. I haven't. I don't think anyone's really arose out of like I don't recently. Like, yeah, you've got like the I guess like the Fortnite groups is like the most recent probably. Yeah, um, yeah. I watched Clicks for a while. I don't yeah, know if you know what that is, but yeah, Clicks rose and uh at a pivotal time. I mean, yeah, it was it's hard to rise, and he did it. Yeah, he does stuff with people, and I guess that's kind of one. Um, they're kind of in their grinding stages. Who knows if they'll go towards the vlog aspect? You know, once like Fortnite dies or whatever. But yeah, they kind of I don't know. Yeah, yeah, all hitch. Um, all the European groups like, you know, Sidemen and mm-hmm. uh, what's the other one with, uh, uh, what's what's that guy's name? I don't know. There's another one. I mean, I feel like those are all like they post once a week and they post bangers every week and they're very, they're very well edited. Like, yeah, very good. No one's, no one's coming up and competing with that right now. So. <laughs> Same thing with Mr. Beast, all them. Yeah, no one's, they're... no one's compete with that. No, it's just groups of people. Yeah. But to give us hope, like I was talking about, like Sam Solek doesn't do anything special. Mm-hmm. He just records his day. Yeah. And so that that gives me hope. Yeah. Like maybe we will get back to that chill state of media again. But I, th- I think we will. I think everything's slowly, you know, kind of doing its rounds. You know, just like we talk about long form content, all that stuff coming back. Yeah. So it's kind of be patient, wait for our time. Yeah. Um, one thing that I talked about with Jay, which is who I talked to last week, mm-hmm. I talked about, um, kind of on that same topic of sometimes I run into the, the point where I do record the highest quality I possibly can. I put my camera up, I do my perfect lighting, I do my perfect captioning, I put in sound effects, I put in edits, but I do all that. And it's to the point where the average viewer can't relate to me anymore. They just want to relate to someone that just puts their camera up and has the basic caption. Um, There's a lot of value to that, that of course I can't see because every other area of life, it's all right, if you're the best at it, you'll do the best. But that doesn't exactly follow that frame with like socials, you know? Yeah. You don't have to be the best at the actual recording to be good at social media. So it's been, it's been weird. Yeah. I was saying, I think people fall in love with the person most you know mostly they don't fall in love with that do you know uh like good good is you know good good golf uh oh yeah golf okay yeah yeah, yeah. the the like the starter of it gm golf garrett clark he started vlogging man my brother and i found him when he had like five thousand subs and that's actually kind of where i learned that like he never filmed anything twice it was always you know first time if you make a mistake whatever keep it in there and i think that's why he grew, grew so fast to be a brand of good good i mean they just hosted a tournament on literally on golf channel and on tv which is crazy coming from a guy that you know started with five thousand subs doing trick shots and stuff yeah just authenticity goes a long ways it is which is good um Mm -hmm. but definitely it was a weird realization for me growing up i'm like it's like reverse it's like it's it's not the case when you make good looking content the only 
people that appeal to that is other people that know how to make it. So like other photographers and videographers, they're like, oh, that yeah. looks great. But that's a very small pool of people, you know? Yeah, 100%. I'd agree. Yeah. But what, what, what what's next for you and your, and your brand and media creating shenanigans? Um, man, I want to... I want to keep on this Madden grind. Like that's that's the thing that's most important to me right now. The the people in the community and the the actual community itself, like the viewers, it's it's awesome. I mean, they're all so generous and they're so willing to like support me and stuff. Like I said, donations and stuff like that. Like they've they've helped me out quite a bit. Um, and I I love the community and I want to keep growing and I want to become one of those like when you think of Madden, you think at MMG and you think at Tate. You know what I mean? Like I, I want to be one of those guys mm-hmm. and. Uh, I mean, I believe one day I can, of course, do it. Mm-hmm. Um, just be patient. But, of course, also on that is I want to, like, a personal goal is to not get stressed out so much. I don't want to be stressing all the time. Yeah. And, you know, that's, I don't need to be stressing. Like, that's that's the that's the realization you got to come to. But, it's, of course, easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it feels like ride or die, or not ride or die, but, like, sink or swim, or whatever that saying is right yeah, at the I mean, beginning. Like, do or die or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. But I mean, out of everyone I've seen in this is in this scene, no one's been no one's been pressing upload like you have. Like <laughs> out of everyone, like six years of daily uploads is wild. Yeah. And no one, I mean, you can say it, I guess, but I feel like no one gives a heck. Like they see it for a week and they're like, "Cool, good job, Tate." But like three years in. No one's gonna encourage you to keep doing that. It's all you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta be your own biggest fan in a sense. It is. Yeah. yeah. How how has that been? It's. I mean, it's been. You know, there's there's had its up and downs. I mean, even like you know, not to throw my parents under the bus and stuff, but there was a while where they're like, you know, they have to see the paychecks to know that you can actually do it full time. Yeah. And so in those times, you know, when they're kind of saying, hey, maybe you should. Then they've never been like go to college type people, but like, you know, maybe you should get a job as some some sort of security and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, you gotta believe in yourself and believe that you can actually actually do it. Yeah. So harder said than nice. done, man. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think I like I said, I like seeing the numbers grow quite a bit, but I think sometimes you gotta just not look at the numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta realize, all right, I'm gonna post these three videos today. I'll look at the numbers another day and yeah. no matter how they do, I'm gonna enjoy it and we're gonna get it done. Yeah. I mean, especially my point of view, like my stuff doesn't get numbers. It gets quality of viewers. Cause I'm yeah. trying to so I I try to look at the numbers, but they legit it doesn't mean much. So it's a weird thing for me to do too. But you know you just can't look at them. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. But yeah, it's, yeah. Let's say I, I started to do that on my live streams. Just something little little trick. I I typically put up another stream, so I have like my chat on one side of the screen, and then this entire other part where it shows all my numbers, how many viewers I have, how long I've been streaming. I put up another stream over that, so I can't see how many people are watching or how long I've been streaming. And since I started doing that, I've been doing, you know, five, six hour streams without even knowing it feels like I'm only streaming for two to three hours. And I typically get a lot more viewers because I mean, what happens is I experienced this, you know, a couple months ago, I used to, I'd be streaming for two to three hours and typically, you know, two to three hours, it gets to 12 o'clock at night and your viewers start to drop. You go to sleep and stuff. And I think just subconsciously you start to be like, oh, maybe I should end stream because people are leaving. But, you know, you got to push through stuff like that. It's not all about the, the viewers and stuff you're trying to you know, the people that are still there, they're the people that you're still growing the the connection with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, live streaming every day is, I mean, I've seen a lot of people say to hop on that. Um, one random thing, I went to a, so you, you guys are the potato state, we're the corn state. Yeah. Um, so I went to like a agriculture seminar and it was a really cool model. This guy, this guy hops on every morning just kind of like like a really chill like corn news thing and hops on for like 10 or 20 minutes and says what's going on with corn um but then also makes a model uh uh, a subscription model too where you can subscribe and get further news so it's like that's a really cool model to to do like you got people coming in every day and you got that free content coming in but then you got that other funnel to gain some 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 money on your own and this dude's like 40 50 years old i'm like hey yeah good work bro smart funnel yeah i'll say there's always those people that are building like I guess, courses like, Hey, if you want to drop ship or whatever, you know, buy my course or whatever. And I think 
people look down on, but you you kind of have to do stuff like that. You know, you have to have some sort of incentive to say become a member of your channel or yeah. you know pay five dollars to subscribe or whatever. Like you have to have some sort of incentive, yeah, something to offer. You know, I mean, you're pretty much selling yourself your knowledge. Exactly. Well, good for him, dude. I appreciate you coming on and saying what's up. Like I said, you've been you've been doing it the hardest for the longest out of everyone I know, and you just just been doing it. You don't give a heck. I love it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, th yeah, thanks for a lot of fun. Thanks for the support over the years too. Of course, of course. Yeah. Keep it up. I love your stuff. You keep it up, man. Yeah, I, 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 I don't exactly keep up with yours because I'm not a huge Madden guy. But every <laughs> I look at your uploads and I'm like, holy crap, he's still doing it. Are you? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. But I uh, appreciate you, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey, anytime. Yeah, you have a good one, man. All right, thank you. Peace, peace.